Hello again, Robert Smitty Smith here. And in this little section, I'm going to talk about performance ideals. Overall principles one should keep in mind. Now, performance ideals. And what immediately comes to mind, power to weight ratio. Body shape, weight distribution, testing and adjusting, also known as tuning. And then safety and reliability come in a distant last. Almost always happens this way. Now let's talk about a good way and a not so good way to do things. Now, power to weight, of course, we have to have a good power to weight ratio, else the car will not be quick enough to do what it intends to do. Body shape, we have three choices to make. We can go for a big aero package with immense downforce. We can go for a more streamlined aero package, which uh, should really aid the fuel mileage, or we can go for beauty and style. All are valid, run the numbers, and see which one makes the most sense to your program. Now, weight distribution. I have a little something for you advisors and TAs that works with me to try to emphasize to students a principle that's not clearly understood of weight distribution. Now if you say the term weight distribution you think about well I got some weight I'm going to put some over here and I'm going to put some over here I'm going to distribute it around more or less evenly and it's generally general knowledge that a, a good handling car is you know 50-50 or thereabouts so that it has equal loading on the front and rear tires. If you ask most racers and most engineering students, why are all the supercars and all the high-end race cars mid-engine designs, they will say, superior weight distribution. That's not exactly right. You can have a rear engine, Porsche 911 for example, Like so, and it's got this big giant lump of mass back here, and it's got the wheels here. It has the engine behind the rear axle. So it still can have a relatively good 55-45 weight distribution. It can have a 50-50 weight distribution. Why? Because they mold lead into the front of the car to balance it. A balanced car does not necessarily mean an optimized car. To optimize a car rather than weight distribution, you want mass central centralization. That's why mid-engine cars dominate the racetrack. Not because of balance. I can easily make any car balanced with a 50-50 weight distribution or whatever I want. I cannot centralize the mass. That addresses the basic design and layout of the car. Now here's a demo. If you do this to your students, they will understand this. I have these slugs of steel from the machine shop. They weigh eight pounds each, the weight of a lady's bowling ball. If I hold them out like this and I rotate my weight, I can feel that mass continuing to rotate me around my pivoting axis here. It's significant. If I do this and cross my arms in front of me and centralize the mass, then you see how cars become exponentially more nimble. Because now, the tires aren't slipping and sliding trying to overcome all these inertia forces. Just do this with any small barbells, pieces of metal, anything. Then that illustrates perfectly the concept of mass distribution. Mass centralization, I'm sorry. Not distribution. Okay, now, T 
test and adjust. This is the post-construction phase. And I can tell you out there, both Ricky Racers and Sportsman Racing and FSA teams, this is the most neglected segment. A lot of it depends on what your time frame for car construction is. I can tell you from bitter experience here at the University of Southern California in Irvine, our SAE, FSA program is on a one-year cycle. That means we get a new crop of freshmen in, they design a car, they build a car, they compete a car in one year. That's really too quick because this gets left out. Construction goes right up practically to the event. There's no time to drive, test, adjust, redesign, optimize. And I can assure you that an inferior basic design will always dominate a masterpiece that is not finished and developed. Just that simple. So, I recommend a two-year cycle minimum for FSA projects. Can be done in one, but the testing and adjusting part of it, which is very significant, gets left by the wayside. Reliability. I think Dr. Ferdinand Porsche said it best. If the car can't finish, the car cannot win. Doesn't matter who built it. If it can't finish, you can't win. And one thing in international motorsports competition you knew about the Porsches is that you were going to have to deal with them on the last lap. They were still going to be Porsches running on the last lap. Every other brand may totally break and fall by the wayside, but generally Porsches didn't. Reliability. Safety. Safety, safety, safety. Now, I apologize for editorializing a bit but I think this needs to be said. Normally, this is the importance priority diagram. Light is right, and then down here, reliability and safety. While they're still part of the triangle, they're not at the apex. Light is always right. Colin Chapman, the famous Lotus designer complete sociopath, should have been in prison multiple times for manslaughter. Why? The only thing he cared about was making the lightest possible race car. He had no care whatsoever in the final analysis for the safety and well-being of his drivers or other people on the track that may have to run over the broken parts, have their tires go down, they crash out, crowds where race cars were craning off the course from broken suspension members or whatever catastrophic basic failures and going into the crowd. He cared about light is right and he was going to build the lightest race cars possible. His method was very simple. His testing was with real drivers in real race cars. If a vehicle finished a race Without falling apart, as it crossed the finish line, he actually said this, a perfectly designed race car disintegrates as it crosses the finish line. If it doesn't disintegrate when it crosses the finish line, it has fat and extra weight that need to be trimmed. Now, when asked about, well, what's the driver supposed to be doing as the car disintegrates, he just, huh. Drivers were considered consumables, very much like motor oil. Use them up, get them out of the car, put in fresh. Just that simple. Do not follow his example. It's wrong, wrong, wrong. Eth ethically and ultimately in the long run, Lotus won would have won a lot more races if they had been able to finish the races. Now, I prefer to invert the pyramid and say safety and reliability should be the most important. And they go hand in hand. A car that doesn't break is inherently more safe. And if you don't believe that, try it sometime. If it's still, if everything's still working at the end, great. Then it's not going to have a mechanical issue 
that is safety related. Safety and reliability need to be foremost. Light is very nice, even very, very nice, but not at the expense of reliability and safety. It's not just your driver, it's the other drivers and the spectators and everybody else involved with this. To me, a perfect race car, absolutely trimmed down to the minimum, does not disintegrate as it crosses the finish line. It's able to make the victory lap, go into the pits, pull into the pits, the driver gets out, then it falls apart. Anything less than that is unsafe because you still got a human being in motion. And that's basically it for performance ideals.